force microscopy and its applications. Uh, coincidentally, it is related to the topic of my colleague. Uh, it can also be used for this structural health monitoring. So here is an outline of the topics that I will uh, cover in this presentation. Uh, I will begin with the introduction about the atomic force microscopy. So atomic force microscopy is an amazing technique that allows us to see and measure the surface structure with unprecedented resolution and accuracy. As you have seen in a light microscopy or scanning electron microscopy, what we see is a two-dimensional projection of a three-dimensional system. For example, if you will take a picture for your phone, it's a two-dimensional projection of a three-dimensional system. But in this technique, you can directly image a three-dimensional molecular structure. So uh, this is the advantage of this uh, technique, that you can directly image a three-dimensional molecular structure, giving us the details about the height as well. So this technique also allows us to get the images showing the arrangement of individual atoms in a uh, sample, or we can also see the structure of individual molecules. So the biggest advantage of this technique is we can image almost any type of sample, be it very hard like that of a ceramic surface or very soft like a human cell or single strand of DNA can be analyzed with this. So this technique has also flexibility with respect to the environment. That is, uh, we can use this technique under high vacuum or ultra high vacuum. It can be used in ambient air atmosphere or in aqueous mediums. We can also use this technique uh, under very high magnetic fields or at very low temperatures, which we usually call as the cryogenic temperatures. This technique has applications in almost all fields of engineering uh, and in science, be it medicine, where it's used for the nanostructural examination of cells and molecules. In biological science, we use this for the visualization of proteins. And in chemistry, we can use this for the chemical analysis as well as building the compositional maps of structures. Besides, it has applications in solid state physics, uh, astronomy, nanotechnology, and mostly in material science, which is used for characterization of the materials. So what makes this technique different from other microscopic techniques, like we have SAM and PSM? So this technique, it does not form the image by simply focusing light or electrons on their surface, like we see in uh, SEM or TEM or in uh, optical microscopes. Rather, it physically fills the sample surface uh, by a sharp probe, thereby building a map of the surface. So it gives us a three-dimensional projection of the surface. So as there is nothing to focus on, there is no elimination of sample and zero depth of field. Therefore, this makes this AFM uh, different from many user expectations of a simple microscope. So let me quickly give you an intro in this uh, historical background of this technique, how this technique was developed. Actually, this uh, AFM technique was developed from scanning tunneling microscope. Uh, scanning tunneling microscope was uh, invented in 1982 by Benning and Rohrer. Both STM and AFM techniques belong to the same category of uh, scanning probe microscopy techniques. But the principle of these techniques is different. In STM, uh, we use the tunneling uh, current for generating the image, uh, it's a quantum mechanics phenomena, but in force microscopy, AFM as the name suggests, we use the force between the tip, atoms of the tip of the probe and that of the sample surface to build the images. This uh, vibrating cantilever type uh, atom force microscopy was going to be introduced by uh, Vikram Singh in 1987. So, the various components that make an atomic force microscope are the cantilever with an integrated tip. Like you can see here, it's just like a beam and it has a sharp probe tip at the uh, end. And we have a laser source like here, you can see this laser beam is incident on the front portion of this uh, cantilever. It's usually painted uh, with a metal surface so as to make it reflecting. And this light is then reflected on a photodiode. We usually uh, use the position sensitive photodiode, quadrantal photodiode, or split photodiode for this purpose. And a special class of transducers are used for scanning the sample surface, for uh, scanning the sample surface, which are called as the piezoelectric transducers. And a feedback control system uh, helps in maintaining the specific uh, force between this uh, tip and the sample surface. 
You can see here that these piezoelectric transducers are connected at the ends of this cantilever and as well as to the sample stage. So it can do the uh, sample in x, y, and z direction as well as the transducer in these three directions. So let me discuss these uh, components in more detail. So cantilever is a long beam with a tip located at the subject. You can see a same microwave of two types of cantilevers that are generally used uh, in atomic force microscopy. We have a single beam cantilever which is made from silicon and a triangular beam cantilever which is made from a silicon nitride. This single beam cantilever is uh, usually used in <coughs> one of the modes of AFM, that's a contact mode. So what the we require a low spring constant with a high resonant frequency so that the sample is not damaged. So for that purpose, we use this uh, single beam cantilever. And for the tapping mode of uh, this atomic force microscopy, we use triangular beam cantilever made from the silicon nitride, where the required uh, this uh, spring constant is high. One of the important components of uh, atomic force microscopy is the probe that is used for scanning the sample surface. Its uh, dimension range uh, between 15 to 25 nanometer. So the resolution of the image that we get is actually a function of the size of this probe uh, or tip, we can say. So the sh uh, sharper is the uh, tip, the more clearer is the image we get. For example, here you can see if the uh, dimension of this tip is uh, one nanometer, we can get a more clearer picture than uh, if the dimension is more than this. Another component <coughs> is the diode that 